Hello, today we are going back to the subject of wind engineering. In today's video we will talk about classical misuse of Bernoulli's principle and Bernoulli's equation in the field of wind engineering. When I say classical misuse, I'm not talking about people that are doing wind engineering professionally or studying it, but on the internet you can see a lot of misinterpretations of Bernoulli's principle and uh, the usage of Bernoulli's equation to explain wind actions on building. In particular, they use Bernoulli's equation to describe how wind blows off, potentially blows off the roof uh, of houses or buildings. While indeed wind uh, is responsible for uh, roof damages and uh, other types of uh, structural failures, Bernoulli's principle cannot be used to explain these phenomena. If Bernoulli worked, the field of wind engineering would be uh, many, many times simpler than it is. Unfortunately, Bernoulli's principle doesn't work. So, in today's video, you will learn the basic uh, physical uh, assumptions and uh, framework of uh, Bernoulli's principle and Bernoulli's equation. You will see how you can apply it and how you cannot apply it. And then, thirdly, you will see classical misinterpretation of Bernoulli's equation in uh, the field of uh, wind engineering. So, let's go and do it. Before going into wind engineering applications of uh, Bernoulli's equation, let's first uh, describe the main principles of uh, this great law in fluid dynamics. The best way to describe Bernoulli's equation is to consider a flow through a pipe, like this. And let's assume flow is coming from left to right. Now I take a streamline in, uh, in this flow and I take two points on the streamline. Point number one here and let's say point number two here. The Bernoulli's equation says that the total energy in the flow in point one has to be equal to the total energy in the flow at point number two. And Mathematically, we express this in the following uh, form. We say that uh, P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1 has to be P2 plus one over two rho V2 squared plus rho g h2. What are these uh, <clears throat> symbols? p is pressure, rho is density, v is velocity at point 1 or point 2, g is gravitational acceleration and h is height of these points measured to some reference height. And this reference height can be anything as long as we are using the same reference to measure h1 or h2. For example, it can be the bottom of the pipe the top of the pipe, it can be somewhere outside of the pipe, anywhere as long as we are using the same one to measure H1 and H2. Now, I said that Bernoulli's equation is uh, basically the statement of conservation of energy, and it is. Because if I multiply this equation with volume, this cap uh, capital V is volume, and I know that volume is mass over density, then you will see here I will get PV, which is internal energy. Here I will get one square, uh, sorry, one uh, half MV squared, which is kinetic energy, and here I will get MGH, which is gravitational potential energy. So the Bernoulli's equation in this form is really uh, energy per unit volume. Each of these is energy per unit volume. Bernoulli's equation is valid if the following conditions are satisfied. Condition number one, the flow has to be steady state, which means that all derivatives with respect to time, partial derivatives, have to disappear, have to be zero. Two, the flow is incompressible, which means that rho is constant. There is no change of density in the flow field. And three, the flow is inviscid, which means that mu is zero, dynamic coefficient of viscosity. I suggest you check my video on viscosity. Now, if these three conditions are satisfied, I can use Bernoulli's equation in this form. 
These three conditions also tell me that in principle I can jump from streamline to streamline in this case. What do I mean by that? Let's say I take another streamline and I take two points on that streamline. Let's call point 3 and here point 4. Well, Bernoulli's equation between 1 and 2 is right here and it says that uh, energy in the flow at point 1 has to be energy in the flow at point 2. I can write Bernoulli's equation between 3 and 4 and it will tell me that energy uh, in flow at point 3 has to be equal energy in the flow at point 4. But I'm saying that 1 and 3 are the same because of these conditions. So if 1 and 3 are the same then 2 and 4 also must be the same, which means I can go from 3 to 2 and from 1 to 4, no problems, as long as these are satisfied. And that's why in practical applications, if you see engineers using Bernoulli's equation, it usually goes like this. They say, I will take one point here and I will take another point here, and then I will apply Bernoulli's equation because implicitly they know what they are doing and that these conditions are satisfied. Very well. So Bernoulli's equation can be used in a, and is used in, in a fluid dynamics to solve large variety of problems. I'm not uh, do that in this particular video, but if you would like me to solve some problems using Bernoulli's equations, let me know in the comment section and I will do it. Now, what I would like to tell you, though, is that Bernoulli's equation can sometimes be used even if these conditions are not satisfied locally. And I will explain, I will emphasize on the word locally if some of these are not satisfied. Let's see what I mean by that. Because this is important for our wind engineering application later. I mean the following. Let's say I have this pipe that uh, looks like this. Also, uh, there are some construction works in apartments next to mine, so I hope you don't hear some... Uh, strange uh, drilling noises. I can hear it, but I hope you do not hear it. Okay, let's take this pipe and I take flow that goes from left to right. I apply Bernoulli's equation. I say here is my point number one and let's say here is point number two and I write this great law. But here you might uh, see something strange. I have these sharp edges and flow at sharp edges cannot follow the edge because the streamline, let's say the streamline that looks like this is not feasible because the uh, streamlines cannot be sharp because uh, in derivative at this point is infinite. Namely, there are infinite number of uh, tangent lines that I can plot here uh, and therefore the streamline cannot follow this shape which means that the streamlines have to be something like this. I now have to be something like this. And over here, close to the sharp edges, I have all kinds of vortices, and we call it flow separation, all kinds of vortices and turbulence that develops. So you can see that locally, flow doesn't satisfy these three conditions, but I am not applying it in this region of the flow. I am applying Bernoulli's, between 1 and 2. So I go from 1 and 2. Now the question is how do I account for these things? Do they affect my flow? The answer is yes, they do affect the flow. And you account them as so-called minor losses. Minor losses are added to Bernoulli's equation as, addi as additional terms. And each loss is uh, a function of the shape of this pipe as well as the velocity, the, the dynamic uh, pressure, namely. So, if you go to fluid dynamics books, then you will see minor losses, as, losses associated with, for example, 90 degree elbows that are sharp, so the pipe has this shape. You will see how the loss looks like if the pipe has this shape, but the corner is not sharp. You will see how the losses look like if you have this uh, contraction in the pipe and so on and so on. And the same way we also account for the bulk frictional losses due to no slip condition. We account for them adding term to this equation. So you can in principle apply Bernoulli's equation 
if some of these are not sat if uh, some of these uh, conditions are not satisfied but not satisfied locally not uh, everywhere that also means you never never can put point 2 here and say okay i will go from 1 to 2 here you always must skip this region you can go from 1 to 2 and you account for this region as an energy loss clearly I don't have to tell you that you can never put point 0.2 outside of the pipe because the flow outside and inside have nothing in common so you cannot go from inside the pipe to outside the pipe pipe is the solid surface there is no uh, penetration of the flow through the solid surface very well now when you hopefully uh, understand how we can use and how we cannot use Bernoulli's equation let's go and see how people inadequately some people inadequately use Bernoulli's equation in uh, wind engineering to estimate wind actions on uh, buildings the argument in wind engineering usually goes like this uh, and when I say usually I mean people that uh, wrongly absolutely wrongly use Bernoulli's equation they would say this is the surface of the earth and let's say we have a building that looks like this doesn't matter at this point what is the shape of the building and the roof at least it doesn't matter for them now they say this is the building wind comes from left to right and uh, it has some velocity v and now listen to this they you can see it on the internet they say i will take point one here and i will take point number two inside the house and now i write bernoulli's equation i say let's say this is point one this is point two they say p1 uh, plus one half rho v1 squared they assume which is okay assumption that height of 1 and 2 is approximately the same so the term due to gravitational potential energy disappears is equal to p2 pressure inside the house but there is no velocity in the house so plus zero basically and then they would say well there you go p1 minus p2 is equal uh, minus one half rho v1 squared and then they would uh, conclude of course that p1 is uh, p2 minus 1 over 2 rho v1 squared and now they say well i know velocity v let's say some anemometer measured it i know that p2 is atmospheric pressure and i know p1 is smaller than p2 for the value of the dynamic pressure and uh, if this is my roof uh, i know that force is uh, pressure times area then i will have force f1 acting like this but force f2 would be much larger force f2 would be much larger because pressure p2 is larger than pressure p1 and then if uh, the net force which is the vector sum of these two if the net force is larger than uh, structural integrity of the roof or the weight of the roof the roof will blow off now this is true this is true that uh, difference in forces on the uh, roof section will cause uh, overall force and if the force is strong the, ro the roof will blow off but the argument on the right is utterly completely wrong there is nothing correct in this argument let's uh, digest what we see here first of all they apply Bernoulli's equation between 1 and 2 that would be exactly the same as me applying Bernoulli's equation here between 1 and this point outside of the pipe these two states of the fluid are not from the same reservoir as we said or the same forcing I have wind outside that is coming and driven by some hurricane or large scale pressure differences and I have fluid inside the house that is not governed by this forcing. Secondly, 
how can they connect streamline through the roof? Thirdly, this is not correct representation of the streamlines because the way they plotted it, they usually plot it sometimes like this, they, they, it means that there is no difference uh, in the flow field between upstream and above the roof. If there is no difference in the flow field here and here, that means that pressure here is equal to the pressure here. But they claim that pressure here is equal to the pressure upstream, atmospheric pressure. So if all these pressures are the same, there would be no force on the roof whatsoever. There would be no force on the roof. So the argument on the right is utterly, completely wrong. This argument is correct, but the difference in pressures that corresponds to the difference in forces uh, cannot be explained using Bernoulli's principle. The explanation is much more complicated and I will address, in, uh, address it in separate video, but for now you should know that if this is house, and you have flow from left to right, then here you have so-called flow separation region uh, that depending on the length of this roof in the streamwise direction can reattach on the roof or can reattach somewhere here later. Here you have upwash, here you have so-called downwash. Uh, so here you have recirculation region, here you have wake and also all kinds of recirculations. So, in other words, flow is completely turbulent and the stationarity is definitely not satisfied. Flow is visited very close to the roof. So, nothing here can be explained using Bernoulli's equation. As you can see, this corresponds to the case if I go from 1 to 2 in this pipe and I said I cannot do that. Now you might say, okay, but what if I have gable roof? Perhaps that would be better if I have house that has gable roof. Now maybe there is some nice flow over here. Indeed, it looks attractive and might seem that the flow here nicely contracts like in a pipe and you have some Venturi effect over here. But the research has shown that the small scale features on the roof uh, namely shingles, here you have uh, eaves and gutter and all kinds installed features on the roof, immediately create all kinds of small scale vortices that prevent stationarity of the flow and you cannot use Bernoulli's equation. Moreover, whatever you do on this uh, windward side of the roof, you can do on the leeward because flow will separate here. So again, you will have some recirculation over here and wake. So, no way you can apply Bernoulli's principle. What you could do using this uh, principle here is the following. Let's say this is the surface of the earth, this line. I have house over here and I have flow coming from left to right. Here I have all kinds of nastiness in the flow and uh, I skip this. So, the, I skip that and I come here where the flow kind of recovers. And I could, in principle, apply Bernoulli maybe from here to here, but accounting for this as a minor loss. But I can never go with Bernoulli inside. But applying Bernoulli from here to here is irrelevant for wind engineering purposes, where we are trying to figure out uh, if the roof will blow off and uh, what are the wind actions on the building. Now I hope uh, this derivation convinced you that uh, Bernoulli's equation is not applicable in wind engineering, at least in this particular set of problems, but similar conclusions would be drawn if we try to apply it to estimate some other uh, wind actions on buildings. I can also convince you uh, about misuse of Bernoulli's equation from another point of view. Namely, today we have wind tunnels all over the world uh, testing buildings uh, uh, to see what are the wind actions exerted on, partic on uh, different shapes of buildings and so on. And uh, if the Bernoulli's equation was applicable to all these situations, then there would be no need to have all these private companies uh, doing these uh, tests. So, this also perhaps partially answers your question, how do we 
in practice estimate wind actions on the building or whether or not the roof will be blown away and so on. Well, the main uh, way to do it is through wind tunnel testing and I will talk about that uh, thoroughly in uh, some of my next videos. Another way to do it is using computational fluid dynamics that is becoming more and more popular and powerful. And uh, I talked about, I, not, I, I gave an overview of these techniques in my uh, video on the reasons for wind engineering. But each of these will be discussed in uh, details in uh, some of my future videos in wind engineering saga. Overall, I hope you enjoyed today video, today's video and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Have an excellent rest of the day. Cheers! Coffee, not whiskey today. <laughs>